Okay, 5.3, solving quadratic equations by finding the roots. And by the way, I'm not only the heck of president, but I'm also a client. All right, so square roots. Whenever you square root something, um, keep in mind that you end up getting two answers, a positive or a negative. But what this is saying is is that you, if you plug in a number, um, you end up getting two answers, right? If you take the square root of 16, you end up getting a plus or a minus 4. So, so a radical sign and a radicant. We gotta know which one's which. That is a radical sign right there. See the radical bar? That is a radical sign. The radicant is the number underneath. So you understand when we're talking about these items what each item means. So, some properties to keep in mind of roots. If you have the square root of an item and there's two items underneath, you can actually split them up with a multiplication sign in the middle. So, the square root of A times B is the same as the square root of A times the square root of B. So, the square root of 12, I could rewrite as the square root of 3 and the square root of 4. And we would keep in mind that the square root of 4 is 2, so the answer there, when we simplify it, is actually 2 root 3. Expedia. The quotient property of roots, um, if I have the square root of a fraction, I can take the square root of the top divided by the square root of the bottom. So the square root of the numerator and the square root of the denominator. So the means is if I have the square root of 3 fourths, I could have the square root of 3 over the square root of 4, and the square root of 4 becomes 2. So it's really square root of 3 over 2. I've fallen and I can't get up. So when simplifying example 1, uh, I try to separate the square root of 24 into some two items and I can separate it into many things. I could do two and twelve. I could do you know three and eight. I could do four and six. Uh, but I choose square root of four and the square root of six and the reason being is because we know what the square root of four is. The square root of four is two. You're trying to simplify it so that one of them can simplify. I could do square root of three and the square root of eight, but if I do that the square root of eight can't really Simplify to keep going with it. So try to find a number that goes into it that can simplify right away. The square root of 4 becomes a 2. So that is 2 root 6 when it is simplified together. Um, I could have done it like this. I could have said, oh, I have the square root of 3 and the square root of 8. That works, right? But this I can't take any farther. But 8, I can keep going. I could make that root 4 and root 2. Now, root 2 can't go any farther, but the square root of 4, as we just said, was 2. And because I have two roots, I have to combine them because I'll end up with root 2 and a root 3 and a 2. Well, according to the rule that we just said, root 2 and root 3 is the same as root 6. 2 times 3 is 6, so we end up with 2 root 6 as the answer. could have also done the square root of 24. I could write that as 2 and uh, 12, so root 2 and root 12. Then I could separate root 12 in a numerous different ways. I can make that root 2 and root 6. And the root 2 can't go any farther, and neither can the root 6. So I end up having three roots. But look at this. When I take root 2 and root 2 and combine them together, I get root 4. And what is the square root of 4? The square root of 4 is 2. So I actually get 2 root 6. So once again, every single way you decide to try to do this, you should end up with 2 root 6 regardless. That's the point by this example. So the point was that there are many ways to solve roots. There's many ways. So if I'm looking at something like this, I end up with the square root of 90, right? But let's try to simplify square root of 90. Me personally, I would choose root 9 and root 10 because the square root of 9, you can simplify it once and for all and be done. The square root of 9 is 3. So it's 3 root 10 is your answer. If I had the square root of 7 over the square root of 16, I could rewrite that as root 7 over root 16. And root 16 simplifies to 4. And the key here is you can never have a root in a denominator. You're always trying to get rid of the root because you don't want it in the denominator. So it's root 7 over 4. In this problem here, we split it up as root 7 over root 2, which is fine. But we never want a root on the bottom. So it's actually pretty simple to get rid of the, uh, the bottom. Since it's a root 2 on the bottom, whatever the root is in the bottom, you just multiply by that on the top and the bottom. Since it's a root 2, I multiply both the top and the bottom by the root 2. Root 2 times root 2 is root 4. And what is root 4? 2. So really it's square root of 14 because 7 times 2 is 14. So root 14 over 2 is your answer. Pardon me. Do you have any grain from pot?
Example two, solving this with roots now. Um, I want to get an x all by itself, so in order to get an x all by itself, I'm going to subtract that one on both sides because it's a positive one. So I subtract one on both sides, so I end up with 2x uh, squared equals 16. That's 2 times x squared, so I can get an x squared by itself. I will divide both sides by 2, so I end up with x squared equals 8. And then from there, since it's x squared, to get rid of a squared, I have to square root both sides. And by doing so, I end up with a plus or minus the square root of 8. Now, if you can simplify the square root of 8, you need to do that. And you can. The square root of 8, you can simplify into root 4 and root 2, because 4 times 2 is 8. And we can keep going. Root 4 is 2. So really, your final answer is plus or minus 2 root 2. There go. Example 3, when solving this, if I want to try to get this uh, squared term by itself and this x by itself, let's get rid of that fraction. So whenever you have a one-third like that out in front to get rid of that, you multiply by the reciprocal, right? So what is the reciprocal of 1 over 3? Well, the reciprocal is 3 over 1. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 3 over 1. These cancel out. So on this side, all I have left is an x plus 5 squared, and 7 times 3 is 21. To get rid of this item, right, I can't. I could sit there and distribute and try to factor, or because this the whole item is squared, I could square root both sides. So if I square root both sides, that's now gone. So I just have an x plus 5 over here. When you square root, you end up getting a plus or minus square root of 21. Now when I'm sitting there, I'm trying to think, can I simplify the square root of 21? Well, to be honest, no, you can't. Uh, I could set it up into 3 and 7, but neither really simplify, so that's just it. The answer is square root 21. But to get x by itself, I need to subtract a 5 on both sides because it's a positive 5. But whenever you do this, make sure when you have a plus or minus, if you keep going, if you have to keep moving stuff around and keep solving, that, that negative 5 goes out in front. So it's actually negative 5 plus or minus root 21. So when I come back, I will finish up 5.3, solving using uh, roots with quadratics.